this one. But it's going to be a fun one. I really do like both these teams quite a lot. We'll see how they can do in this one. I'm also interested uh, if they are going to target, you know, Skarner. As we've seen, some of the teams willing to place this champion in uh, the first round of bans, whereas a lot of the teams that have played against it uh, have actually regretted that decision. Even in the last one where we just saw countless QSSs. Okay, they were countable. There was four of them. Yeah. Uh, and plus, it's all of them count that high. All right, Kobe, don't be, don't be counting. Ah, I'm showing off again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at you counting to four. You got fingers in your hands. Uh, Scar is banned, by the way. But there we go. That's kind of the point we are trying to illustrate there. FlyQuest, not one of those teams, not going to let it through. So then the things like Sejuani really rises importance. But to me, Smithy has always been a guy that has had a very deep champion pool. And no matter what frontline tanks you ban against him, you know, he's still going to be pulling up things like Gragas that people aren't, you know, isn't really widespread and other people aren't playing. And it feels like any further uh, attention towards that role would kind of fall on deaf ears. So it comes through one funnel ban, and they're going to get rid of Scion. Maybe they want to play Gnar for themselves. Flame might grab that pretty early on on the red side here. Keep in mind, Gangplank still yep. up. No, Gangplank banned. Oh, I'm, banned. I'm stupid. Just kidding. Gangplank is down in the depths. Azir picked up, though. Rise available as a counter pick. Only mid laner banned in this one. Galio and Zoe. Yeah. Velkaz as well, uh, as we've seen. Ineffective use earlier today. True. When he tried to do it against Febivin. Meanwhile, though, Fly, when you think of this mid laner, you're thinking more of the Rome champions, Talia, Rise, Aurelian Soul. Uh, so there you go. Correct, Freak, you have redeemed yourself. You're Ooh. back to a, an even zero point. All right, is it going to be Nar? Is it going to be Nar for Flame? They banned Scion. Please, for, for I need a better win rate than Jat. Actually, just having picked Rise, I've got a better win rate than Jat. Jat's got, I think, one prediction right so far today. So uh, better analysis, play by play caster. And Callista, just kidding. All right, well, I got one. All right, interesting, because this, you know, whenever you see Callistas, then you start to think about um, what sort of playmaking can they have on the bottom side of the map a bit earlier in. Uh, then you think about which top laner is going to have teleport, since, as you pointed out, we have the Gangplank and Scion bands. Uh, Nar seems to be the, the last premiere there with Camille. It doesn't look like either of them want to jump on the first half of that matchup, but if one of them picks either Nar or Camille, mm -hmm. then you would expect the answer to come through for FlyQuest here before the double bans come in. Right. Usually top lane is not when you want to let get pinched down, but... Shout I... out to Piglet, maybe. Yeah, right. Uh, and it's going to be that Nar blinded up by Impact and Flying with them. A bit of a favor banning Scion 4, or maybe they wanted them to push that Nar pick through because they had a plan for it. So top set of the map locked in for Team Liquid. Azir, Camille. Sejuani, Nar. There is the Camille. Good job, Kobe. You're a smart man. So a couple of desync picks here. No jungler yet for FlyQuest. No bot lane farm roll for Liquid. And unsurprisingly, those are the bans. And if we evaluate here at kind of the halfway mark, the, the team comps that they're building, Team Liquid seems to have uh, a bit smoother scaling, maybe. Uh, it's very slight here, but anytime the team with Azir and the super strong front line locked in already, like, you feel pretty comfortable. The last two picks definitely change a lot, but FlyQuest seems much more about split pushing, side lane pressure, using Rise Ultimate um, to transfer between either the playmaking of a Kalista bottom side or, uh, you know, the split push pressure of Camille. So FlyQuest look much more mobile Whereas yeah. Team Liquid definitely have that solid team fight set up. Uh, the skeleton already laid for them. I wonder if they want to remove more team fight off with like a Zac ban or something, or remove one of those other engage tools. Certainly Camille is very good at this, uh, absolutely, but you might not always want a single point of failure for starting a fight. That said, Tank Force exists as well, so it's really up to them. What does Kane think Liquid should ban? And what are they afraid of reply? And honestly, you know, Camille by herself, even if you do get to knock people out of the way for a second with Hextech Ultimatum, she's still fairly squishy. You're building Trinity Force, you're building you know, more for uh, right. you know, side lane. So if she is your initiation, which right now she is, that's you know a very risky option. You don't really want to pull off a team fight in that manner. If they wanted to do that, they would have to have some extra support for her engage or uh, a more primary form. So here's Blackbest hovering the Zac for themselves. and. Team That's not more primary form of engage. Yeah, exactly. So they get the primary engage. I do respect the Orin ban. I think it's actually quite good. Uh, Orin is a great hard engage champion from the support role. So I think Liquid still did try to ban team fight options, and they seem to have decided Zac was the least of all the evils. Now Liquid has to lock in their entire team comp. They need a bottom lane, and all they know is they're facing a Callista down there. They got to pick both their AD carry for double lift and Ole's support. 
Ole's done very well on roaming champions, the Bard, the Thresh, this kind of stuff. And with an Ezreal picked up, it actually allows you to play um, more safely in the 1v2. It actually unlocks more roaming champions. Might not be his playstyle, though. Braum, the current hover, and certainly a great support. Yeah, I definitely agree. Braum uh, has a lot of options for counter engage here and trying to split up the Zac plus Camille that are going to try and have a similar timing. There's a lot of defensive opportunity here for Team Liquid. Um, you know, with the Azir self feel, uh, you know, Braum and Ezreal are extremely safe, so they definitely look like they are looking to play a more simplistic, you know, back to sort of basics, I guess, here for Team Liquid mm -hmm. uh, versus FlyQuest that are definitely going to try and use that Fog of War to their advantage. You know, you have the mobility of the Rise Ultimate for Surprise, uh, you know, side lane moves. Ooh, as well as a Tom Kench Abyssal Voyage now. All right. They're getting very, very uh, creative here for FlyQuest. So yeah. it looks like if there's any sort of tempo early on, that's going to be the main concern for Team Liquid. They're just looking to wait until they can get that five stack, uh, whereas FlyQuest really want to make some uh, mobility uh, opportunities for themselves here, especially with Zach long range engage. We've seen Onda perform very well on this champion and trying to create space for themselves. So I'm going to watch for a couple of team map mobility abilities for FlyQuest. Two fly in the mid lane stunt on that Tom Catch the bot that can bring people around. It'll be fun to watch for TL, of course, again with a very standard conventional team fight comp. Two to three very large tanks in the front line. Azir can deal a million and a half damage in a blink of an eye. Pobelter should feel pretty good on this Azir. Double lifts Ezreal. No shame in that one either. <laughs> See how Flagos can do on their side. Flamer's impact going to be a fun one. His impact has not had the best performance so far this split. And Flame on Camille can certainly break this matchup open with a little bit of help. There's Lana Finger screen one more time. The band's at the very bottom of it all, and we'll see who can move on a little bit more in these standings. Liquid pretty securely in third place right now. Of course, they started the week uh, tied with Clutch Gaming. Clutch won earlier on, so if Liquid want to be anywhere but fourth by themselves, they will need to pull in a win right here. Super excited for this bot lane matchup here, actually, with Turtle getting his Callista uh, that he has had some very big performances on in the past. Going up against Doublelift, you know, the, the battle of the two XTSM AD carries. Yeah. Here. Definitely could be a very volatile bottom side. It, it would, I would think that Stunt and Turtle would be the ones uh, trying to create the aggression down there and looking to be the aggressors, but mm -hmm. very well could be uh, some other opportunities for Team Liquid. Braum and Ezreal definitely have the possibilities of making very good use of that passive, stacking it up, getting those stuns uh, if it is in concert with some jungle pressure. Totally. I need to correct myself, by the way. Mm. Regardless of this result. What did you say this time? <laughs> regardless of the result, Liquid will end the day in fourth place. That is Shout outs to that. That is classic. <laughs> Props 100 Thieves for making it a reality by winning earlier today. They are going back to their roots. Yeah, I mean, they're playing as old school as it gets. Let's see what happens in this one. As Ole doing a minor invade, finds a slow. Poe will hit him, hits the ward, and then walks away. Right. Top side, a little bit of jungler interaction as well. You can see the Pixel Brush Ward uh, here already saw Smithy, and it is going to be a Raptor Camp sighting of Onda as well. Now, one of the things with Zach routes, um, you can go for super greedy routes with Zach starting on red side, moving over uh, you know, through Raptors into the bottom side, and then do blue and drop at the same time, but that gets you so low. So in professional play, a lot of emphasis is put on finding, especially when you're versus champions like Zac, that can have vast uh, you know, variability as far as how much life or how much danger you're willing to take with your early routes. Um, you really want to take away the opportunities for them to go for the more greedy ones and go for those like double camp at once uh, clears that are going to increase their clear speed, but also come at the cost of you know, possible deaths on individuals. Something interesting that happened right here, by the way, Smithy started Hunter's Talisman, the AoE one. Yep. And I don't believe he started on wards, but I think they did see that Smithy had Talisman. So they actually had pinged him on Raptors, knowing it would be a second camp. Yeah, and what the Talisman allows you to do is more easily do the Raptor camp. You can do it if you start with the Machete, but uh, you're not going to have the extra health leech from it. And he was expecting to go for an invade on Zac, like we kind of talked about earlier. A lot of teams... We've seen not punish Zach early on in the game, but uh, you know he went for an invade here, has gone to the bottom side, still going away blue right now after just the ra uh, red and raptor start. 
and he was more healthy because of that talisman start. Yeah. He was able to get the leech with. It does slow down your clear, especially at the solo camps, mm -hmm. um, but it's not too significant. And he obviously wants to get this Zac behind so that there's not a lot of early pressure. Yeah. Meanwhile, though, Onda has gone for the full topside clear, so maybe he tries to influence Impact, who's standing very far back. Absolutely the case right now. So, similar amounts of camps killed, but the problem is two of them were stolen away. Xmithy took two of Onda's camps. Onda now heading through the top side himself, so he might get something back, but he will meet Xmithy in there. Yeah, Xmithy already immediately going to this top uh, quadrant because he knows that would be where Onda would want to answer. So, even though Onda makes the move and gets the plant, Smithy has secured his steal of the camps, and there will be very little recourse for Onda. You can wow. see, can't go for a gank because Impact is playing safely. Uh, they have vision of him since he popped the Scryer's Bloom. And that, my friends, is how you get an early jungle lead at the pro level uh, against a weaker early game jungle champion. And even though it's very small, and as you're saying, it's not you know showing up in the CS or whatever, it's not about yet. the reduced options for him. Mm -hmm. Camp takes enough minutes to respawn, so there's actually nothing to kill except the bottom river scuttle crab for Onda. Goes back, gets his green smite. The second to last one he will ever buy in League of Legends. Woohoo! Most of us are happy about that. I mean, yeah. I think it's a good change. A lot of people never bought it anyways if you're yeah. talking about solo. We're talking about solo queue, exactly. Everyone's like, what? It changed? I buy red smite every time anyway. Yeah, I was talking with Medias about that on the uh, NELCS lounge stream, mm. where I'm like, how does it feel playing at 8.4 in, in solo queue? It's like, well, the game's not any different, and you don't buy it still with you. So, anyway, this is the game we're playing here, competitive with wards and everything. Is I'm actually curious. Did, did they drop any bombs on the on the, the lounge stream? What was the single best, the single uh, best comment thing. that you had from either of those oh, two? Oh, man. Uh, I got... Oh, Great they called Yerkson overrated. Ooh. Yeah. And Double came by and said Sneaky was underrated in lane. <laughs> I believe. So, that was good. So who knows what to believe? All right. I'm going to have to go take a look at the VOD. Because currently, Topside Flame is really controlling uh, the push in this Topside. Impact is still CSing fine. Uh, mm -hmm. He should be able to get these no problem with Zara under turret anyways. But they have had the push constantly up here from Flame on Camille. Using that comment, the classic here versus yeah. Nar to be able to land uh, you know, leg sweeps with the uh, comment damage coming through afterwards is why we see that so often. Going for those trades. Yeah, if you get the slow on the sweep, it pretty much guarantees the Comet lands, so you do get extra burst out of that one. A little extra poke. 100 gold advantage to Team Liquid so far. A lot of that's going to be better camps being killed by the jungler. Scuttle's count is worth 4 CS, even though uh, Raptor's worth more gold. Yeah, very misleading, because Scuttle's also are way less experienced than any of the small camps. Mm -hmm. And experience early on in the game is so incredibly important. Rushing to your level six in a meta where almost all junglers are these tank junglers Ooh. with crowd control ultimates. Speaking of crowd control ultimates, or well, without ultimates, but still, stunt chomps up turtle and goes, "We're fine, guys." Yeah. With his first gank, turns into a couple of uh, points of mana and a couple hundred HP burn, and that's it. So I don't really get too scared or invested in a yeah. <laughs> early ganks down bottom towards a, a uh, Tom Kench lane. Yeah, it's uh, almost never going to work. And in this case, it did not. And now he goes back to his jungle and gets spotted by three wards and then recalls. Yeah. There is a lot of deep vision here for FlyQuest in the red quadrant. And Smithy, oh, another early thing that I should point out, um, for pro junglers especially, counting the wards that your enemy jungler has in their tracker's knife. This is not mm. going to be useful at all anymore because it's literally removed from the game yeah. after this. Uh, Give us the advice, weekend. Kobe. But counting those wards um, early on in the game, you could be like, oh, he has no wards left in his tracker's knife. He must have just put them both on my uh, red quadrant side. So Smithy should know that he's in the warded side. And uh, he's trying to burn down the red before clearing out either the zombie ward or even the control ward. Mm -hmm. But um, he knows right now that he's under vision and the rest of the team playing accordingly. He's going to grab this red no problem. And one more smack will do it. He killed the control ward a second ago as well, so a zombie for him. He killed another one that Onda put down a little while ago. Ole going to walk backwards, trades cues with stunt, but really only hits one, so stunt gets no damage. Tier and Sheen double stacking up his items right now. He's going to feel pretty good about this. 
The game's staying very equal in the early game. The lane's pretty close in farm all across the board. Yeah, the lanes are, but the jungle isn't. Onda has no options, so he tries to go for an invade. There's the experience difference we talked about. Smithy level six now. The only reason Onda can do this is because Fobelter just went for a recall. Ooh. So their mid lane difference allows Onda. Uh, oh, actually, Smithy got that smite, right? I think he did, yeah. Okay, so Onda took away maybe a small one or two small ones. That's about it. Uh, in that. Ooh, nice. Oh, didn't land the W, but a pretty good amount of damage. Now the ult get traded back in for a flame, and here comes Rise. Fly wants to be in this one as Impact's running away. Does have flash, so gets booted up. Q's gonna land. Oh, oh, the W doesn't land for flame. He flashed late, oh, and it would have okay. met the kill. <laughs> An unfortunate misplay out of Flame denies him first blood. Now X50 wants to fight, but he's 1v2 in this one. Only so much he can get accomplished, but it is a lot Ooh. of damage. Are you kidding? He nearly kills off Fly. Stop watch. Now watch for this one. Debbie's not going to land. X50 forced to run away. Flame wants round two, misses the stun, but the red buff means damage, gets the leg sweep anyway, and Flame gets first blood. The best play in all of League of Legends history. <laughs> <laughs> Got a big red nose and honking his horn and that was pull out the car. Funny that he is the one in the end rewarded with first blood bonus. <laughs> ah. Everything comes out right as rain. Pobelter, though, wasn't <laughs> roaming, so he got the early shove here. Flies now back in the mid lane with his teleport. But here's another look at just the second half of this. Okay, they cut out the first half. Uh, no, no dive there happened before, but the stopwatch actually saves him. Uh, Smithy tries to time the second swing of the W there with the uh, duration of the stopwatch. Doesn't quite get it, and then Flame's able to finish it off. Really close one there, but now we've got ourselves a 400 gold lead for FlyQuest. Ana's done a pretty good job of staying uh, pretty much alive in this game. I checked right as the uh, Raptor fight was starting, and he was only 60 gold behind individually, so... Really survived the early game from X50 quite well. Blue's gonna be handed off, no problems to Poe Belter, who is plus 12 CS himself, because he did not roam out. Bottom lane even being able to move up the river here. Checking back in as well, uh, this Team Liquid duo has the CS lead, gets the Scuttle Crab control, even was able to get the push, so. You know, Ole and Double Lift doing quite well for themselves down here. We do have um, the Sheen completed. You know, he's got his nice purchases already, had the tier stacking up, so feels very confident down there, as well as having the ultimate to try and control any of those other lanes of minions that kind of get out of control. And Team Liquid's game plan of heading towards the smoother five versus five setups yeah. seems to be uh, going decently despite the hiccup on top side where First Blood was given over, and as you mentioned, that also put Smithy further behind in the jungle. So Ando was able to use the time that he was dead, mm -hmm. you know, just farming up the own jungle and uh, getting the completed Cinder Hulk as close to Smithy's pieces. Yep, less items for Sejuani right now. It'll change around this hiccup. They'll be fine. I'm sure they can hold their breath, and it'll pass before too long. Impact coming by as well as they eat a couple of grapes down there. Thankfully for them, Rift Herald does not eat those grapes, uh, unlike the little smaller cousin, the Scuttle Crab. Uh, since you like te being technically correct. Yeah, they're uh, honey fruit. Honey fruit. I, I'm aware. Yeah, honey fruit. Okay, well. This fight, 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 fight. Oh, blue team gets it. Can they grab the relic in time, though? They're zoned out, so it's only some gold, and they will not resummon the Rift Herald. Yeah, it, it doesn't mean a whole lot if you're not able to grab the eye, by the way. Oh, he's trying. Secret Agent Smithy doesn't have flash. So that's Ooh. dangerous. Now okay. he goes, and yeah, that's going to be a despawn. Uh, actually, it lasts like 45 seconds or something, right? It's, maybe it's even up to a minute. He's, He's still again. Wants. <laughs> All right. I love this game. All right, Twitter. <laughs> hashtag Smithy win. Hashtag Onda win. Will he get it or will he be denied? Break his ankles. Get in there. Oh, he's, he hashtag have Smithy win. He gets it. TL. Oh, he knocks them out as well. He's going to have to ult. And he what? doesn't ult out. What? How did Huge misplay out of Onda. He's blobbling it. What just happened? All right, that was one of the biggest misplays I've ever seen, and Teal gets a kill. Bottom lane in this game, they're just like, what the what? hell is going on up there, guys? Is this Signatops vs. Renegade? What's going on, guys? Oh, man. All right, well, let's return to the scene of the crime in the replay here. Onda trying to play defense. Oh, and then he sees top laner has backed off because you can see on the mini map going for the minion wave there. Then, if you full channel the ultimate, then you can't be interrupted, and you yeah. will get out. So I think he just stopped the ultimate channel a little bit early there. Yeah. Uh, because he didn't actually want to take anyone over with him. 
So maybe he wanted to finish it while no one was on the ultimate. Because right, sure. if he brought Smithy over with them, then the chase would continue and maybe... Regardless, that, that outcome yeah. was the worst outcome. <laughs> yes, it was. saw on screen where they gave up the Rift Herald, Eyeball plus died, and no longer have the Zac passive. All Ooh. right, well, fight's been happening. Liquid are now once again in the lead. 300 gold plus the Herald on Smithy. Let's see what comes in next. Meanwhile, on the bot lane, 11 CS lead for Doublelift, not the worst. Farming really nicely. Turtle, of course, very close behind as they both got about 10 CS per minute. Actually, more than that. But Fancy means 400 bonus gold for Doublelift. Puts the Trinket Ward over the wall. Make sure he's not going to get ganked and just get some nice safe farm. Uh, nice safe farm. Bottom lane in this game is so calm compared to the rest of the map. Uh, the constant plays we're having up there. Once again, we're going to have a jungler sighting here. Smithy has a red buff, so I'm just going to have to run right out of there. Not to mention both solo laners for Team Liquid were pushing up. So that was a risky invade, but being Zach and using the Blast Cone there, he was able to get his mission complete. There's Deep Vision now in the jungle. Fly! Oh, he catches them despite the flash, actually. The back end of it tagged him. One more hit's going to be a stun. He's trying to ult away. And now he can't get out because Sedge stunned him. No escape route left for Fly, and he's grounded. Second kill in for Liquid. Oh, Belter with the all-in onto Fly there, starting it out with the Azir sec. Didn't even have to blow Summoner, so that's a huge discrepancy in mid lane. And now with the Rift Herald summon, they're that's gonna be able sure to finish it. this one. That's for sure right there. Shelly shows up the Molish helps as well, and gold goes over. Nicely played Liquid now, breaking this game open. 2,000 gold lead, another charge in the mid. Yeah, significant damage down there as well to the secondary one. Pobelter immediately raises the Azir turret for extra pressure on mid, so they get a reset without having to give up any pressure. And look at this one more time. Fly tries to get out, but Smithy flash for the extra auto there to get his permafrost stunned down, mm -hmm. curing their kill and their first turret bonus gold. And he heads up to immediately summon as well. It guaranteed the first turret came through, and it was nicely played. So. We reset on the map. The gold lead remains 1,800. The zero turret falls down pretty quickly in the mid side as Bowelter had summoned that one a second ago. And we get to once again watch Impact face up against Flame for a few more seconds. This gold actually plus 4 CS for Flame, so much, much better than uh, the actual global average for the matchup. I believe Mark said it was normally minus 8 for Camille. This one plus a few. Yeah. And that matchup has so many intricacies in it because of the possibilities of timing windows there. Working around Mega Nar, you know, Camille being able to all in very easily if you have vision on Mini Nar mm -hmm. uh, and the junglers. So that one did, has so many factors. It's, yeah. Uh, it's, it's a high variance lane, definitely, even definitely if the average true. is something else. Look at this vision, though, because they're moving up past the river now. Team Liquid have been able to secure so much off of uh, those top lane plays that the bottom of the map is now finally getting the benefit here. Poe Belter making the pick in mid lane, taking all the summoners off of Rise and then addition to the mid turret means he gets to move right in, claim his prize there, and grab the blue buff. All right, Liquid doing a pretty, pretty good job of strangling things away. Going to look for, can't go get in smite range for any of that. Didn't have it up anyway, but no wolves taken. Ooh, he wants to go for a little bit of a trap here. Lands some slows, gets the Q again, knocks him out of it, gets a stun as well. And no follow-up damage coming through. Has to respect the fact the rest of the team could come around. Tom Kench, of course, nothing to scoff at as it's... Yeah. Yet again, another uh, Ignite plus Glacial Augment Tom Kench, just like the previous game we cast. And of course, bot lane has been fairly uneventful kill-wise, at least so far in the game. Yeah, and the, but the Team Liquid bottom lane, even though there's no kills down there, they're the ones with the pressure. You know, they move up their minion wave as well. Olay's in here, invading with the rest of the team, and the Dragon is started up because not only the mid lane, you know, and the good play of Bow Belter, but bottom lane as well. So Team Liquid with so much control here early on in this game, it looks like they are going to be able to control the pace. And if, if you control the pace as the team with the great front line and Ooh, Azir. Another knockback is going to cancel ulti once again and fly whoop. again. Has no way out of this one, but except walking. Gets a slow a couple times by Azir. The flash exhaust. The Q could land in a second. Ulti coming out for Ole. Just all the crowd control in the world. And flies down once again. The wings are clipped three to one for Liquid. And they continue to be able to push up here. As we talked about in Champ Select, if, if FlyQuest aren't able to get any early pushes going, any use out of their Abyssal Voyage, Rise Ultimates, Traveling, Side Lanes, Fog of War engages from Onda, then it's going to be hard for them to go back into this game. You know, you can see them scrambling here, but Team Liquid have the opportunity to roam up with multiple people. This is a jungler gank plus. Impact had already pushed his lane. 
bottom lane uh, just fine, leaving double lift down there after pushing. So Olay got to join as well. And Fly, even though he had Onda in the area, there's no way he's getting out of a four-person merge from Team Liquid. Yeah, I really like how Ole played that as well. He saved the ult till he was in the control warded brush, so yeah. he could not use the animation as a key to juke sideways. Either way, well played by the squad, and Liquid getting a little bit farther ahead. Now 3,000 nearly their gold lead here. Yet to get a second turret. They've got that cloud from earlier. We'll see where the next play ends up being, but slowly but surely they're getting farther and farther ahead in this game. Yeah, Poe Belter right now with Nasher's Tooth and both Magic Penetration items is insanely powerful in this game. Oh, he yeah. doesn't have his Flash right now after that play, but does have a Cleanse. And if Team Liquid play around this Azir, then it seems like it's gonna be, there are going to be just very few things for FlyQuest to go after. If, you're, if you are Onda right now and you're trying to get your team back into this, you're looking for an area, you have to try and... You know, just even go through lanes, honestly, because you, you you know that the enemy team's been invading your jungle and there are going to be wards there, so you won't have Fog of War to work with. That's what he's trying to do here. Into the play bot side, there is a Zac coming around. The big knock is going to be there, but gets taken off by stun for a second. Here comes Camila's well, flashing for a play. Hey. The double can go down. They found one. They're going to find two, and Get the it. play comes through. Four of them show up. They get two kills. Man, with one of the few options left, he goes right down the lane. They use the teleport. Great job by FlyQuest. Even though they didn't have a lot of options, they're able to make the one they have work down here to get some gold back for themselves. Turret as well getting very, very low. Even though Smithy moves in, um, I think it's mostly the Azir Mia that's causing them to back off here. Pobelter's the big threat that was oh, heading yeah. down mid lane and causes them to back off so they don't secure the objective afterwards. That's very rough for FlyQuest. They really need that gold to get back in this game. Here's another look though. Honda just walks straight down the lane. Great job by Hing, able to get off the Q uh, there. And the teleport from Flame ensures that they secure both of the kills. A lot of crush onto the squad and FlyQuest pull the game back to only a 1600 deficit, certainly within reach now in this one. It no longer qualifies, I believe, as quote-unquote major leader deficit. This is now <laughs> neutral time as far as official stats are concerned. And that will tick up slowly as this one goes through. Liquid is a few weeks ago where the team that was speed running everyone. They were nearly playing the Nexus at this point in the game. They have slowed down a little bit in recent history, but still a bit ahead in this one, and they can keep that going forward. We heard on the analyst desk earlier today that they expect Liquid to trend upward and start picking up more and more wins as the season progresses. But playing FlyQuest close, we'll see how the squad does. As they have so far been undefeated with this lineup. Sample size of two, but really do have high hopes for FlyQuest here. All right, well, right now they're going to have to give up this bottom because as you can see, once again, whenever Azir roams, whenever Poe Belter pushes the wave and moves into Fog of War, everyone else backs off. They do not want to get into the fight uh, with... Ooh, actually, they might actually find a, some sort of pick here if Honest not careful. They're clearing out all these control wards, though. This feels very bad for FlyQuest. Gonna be an incredibly quickly killed blue buff there. Nice deal for Pope Belter. Yeah, they got the bottom turret, they got the wave push, they got another blue buff steal for themselves. Liquid have been generally in control of their jungle. You're seeing about a two camp farm lead for Smithy. It's an inexact measure. Lane tax can change that around a little bit. Meanwhile, Flame's still looking pretty good on his side of the map. Plus 10. It's gonna go down less and less, but has had some good roams in this game. Yeah, Pope Belter is up. 12,000 gold and change over Fly with just the assists, the extra yeah. minions, the turret kills that they've gotten. And uh, yeah, 1,200 gold is half of the entire game lead. So that is where most of that lead is. It's going to be Liquid hoping to, as you mentioned before, play around Pobelter and Fly be wary when he's called missing. Yep. Well, last outer turret left standing here is going to be Team Liquid's focus. Double F currently by himself, and they're pinging the vision that they don't have right now uh, for him to keep safe because they know that one of the only possibilities of them you know, dropping back out of contention of this game is Onda from Fog of War yep. getting initiation, stunt there with Tom Kench trying to bring someone else in. But now all members of the team are accounted for. And TP advantage for impact, there is not one for Flame right now. So even though it's the same yeah. roles in the same lanes, there is a mismatch of who can join. Makes sense that Fly wouldn't actually go for a big play right there because they certainly couldn't join with any more. And Pobelter has pushed lead on Fly as well, so it seems like both their solos more keen to join the fight if there is one. Liquid looking a little bit aggressive. You can see them fight for these wards, fight for a bit of pressure. Yeah, Team Liquid know that with this teleport advantage, they can force on this top side. Pobelter starts to roam up. 
you know, Impact continues to push on bottom side. And they're forcing FlyQuest to choose between bottom wave moving up to the turret and trying to answer the Team Liquid pressure. You can find them in fights for those. Nice smite. Onda gets the scuttle. Not scuttle. Big Raptor. Same amount of gold, though. It comes in next. Oh, a nice solo kill. Okay, duo kill on the Mountain Drake. Goes Let's go continue to add the non-combat objectives to their inventory. Onda going to look for the play. Actually goes with a knock up there as the Drake goes down, but doesn't find anyone to actually fight over there as we cut over. 2,600 gold still the lead. Liquid doing pretty well on this one. Flyquester just never really had quite the stranglehold on a lane to actually knock the turrets all the way down. A lot of these are injured. Bot lane's at 10%. Top lane, I think, is around half right now, but that gold is still waiting to be grabbed. And even with Turtle and Co. here, doesn't mean much more. But whether it's a blue buff, walks back to mid. No worries for him. Yeah. As we progress in this game, we're going to keep most of our attention on the um, lane allocation here for Team Liquid because Black West are constantly going to be looking for either Abyssal Voyage to help out one of the split pushers like Camille or Ryze, um, or a Zack engage from some sort of fog of war that they're able to carve out with uh, vision denial. Currently, Team Liquid have decent vision up in this top quadrant, so they've been tracking Zack, and it's making the, the counterplay fairly difficult for FlyQuest to come up with. But the battle over that vision is what is going to spur the next you know, kind of point of contact here. Absolutely not going to be found on the one to pull back together, even though the arcane shift is back with the double. But what's the frontline going to look like? The unstoppable pushback to play kidnap as they're going to find Ole by himself. Pulls in the hourglass, looks to buy some time. Double the fan of the backside. Pope shows up for one, but already one of his teammates is dead. 5v4 in this fight. They're going to look for a little oh. bit more on the low. Almost loblets, but stays alive. Impact going to lose his life. Makes that a two for zero so far. And the chase continues. Ole over the wall. One more shuttle to him in a wild turtle. Takes him out. A three for zero favor of FlyQuest. And Team Liquid fighting over that vision. FlyQuest use it for the engage. They get the kill so quickly. Impact never transforms. Onda very low there on Zack. And he's going to have to run his little legs right back to the fountain. Wee! Zack's going to run away and it's going to be okay. Yeah, he's going to heal off the crowd. Deeper actually. over time, and they'll be fine. Mid lane, sir, gonna take a bit more damage. Demolish, so it's gonna walk in to get that one. Takes it down. This could be the turret going. It's been a few more seconds. This one, 500 HP or so left on that. The attacks are coming here for Fly, kind of ignoring Pope's damage output. <laughs> Gets a lock of shield. There we go. It burns down to a red buff, and he was, I believe, in range for local gold. Yep. A little bit more richness there. Fly quest bringing the game right back in. And again, we talk about how important the vision is versus this team. They have the Zack. They get the initiation. Stun him up. Stunt is able to get the Devour and then the Kidnap right after from Onda. Even though Ole has Stopwatch available and the, uh, Hold Elder tries to roam up, it's a little bit too late. The damage from Wild Turtle, especially here on this Talista, yeah. Here's so much for themselves. They kill off Impact before he can transform to Mega, and they get a very, very big opening right back into this game. That's just what FlyQuest needed. Yeah, small heartbreak for Doublet as well. Arcane Shift completed just after the ulti landed from Camille. It would have pulled the, the cage another five yeah. minutes down to the bottom left, and that would have let the ulti save him, but he had nowhere to go. Now the attempt for a Baron. A nice knockback, but Zack can still come yeah. in. The smite is going to come in for Smithy. Secures the Baron. They're going to get that kill on the Onda. No point in saving the Blobbits. He will die after the fact. Kill credit goes through to Smithy. He deserves that one for the better smite. Oh my goodness. So close right there. Onda able to get in with the unstoppable ultimate. Yeah, that was sick. And tries the 50-50, but Smithy, the veteran fingers, too good there. Able to secure that one. And that's such a big you know, game changer for Team Liquid. After getting killed like that up on the top side, to return to Baron and instantly burn that one down for a 50-50, now they've got the rewards. They can try and push and get some extra gold from the secondary turrets. Let's take another look here, because this is straight up might be smite, 50-50. It gets into range down here, 728. And uh, Smithy's able to finish it off there. He also had his uh, W going, so combos the damage. Very well done. And now let's see if they can get these turrets down in the siege, because they still have to worry about the Zack engage. Uh, you know, FlyQuest, you can see here, they're trying to get some areas for Onda to work with. And uh, another surprise attack going. I'm pretty sure during that fight, Smithy was level 13 to Onda's 12. Onda Smite right now does 720. Literally unsmiteable. Yeah. And Smithy's, I think, at like was, 750 or whatever. That was just perfect then. Because that's a yeah. little bit of luck for your teammates to hit sure it, it exactly is. to that range. But here we go. 
Oh, the fight comes in on in the front line, looks for the big ulti across this one. A big stun and a wild Twitter can't fight for a little while. Polar gets a knockback, but doesn't get much for it. Now Flame running away in the top side gets away with it. Now on the bottom side again, the chase down towards Wild Turtle. Finds some alone time. Will knock down only with the Rune King. The Slight comes through. Gets that kill. They're gonna trade back with Fly to the Rise is dead. 4v4 is forced to run away as Flame cannot be in this fight. He's got a recall back and stuck. Gonna lose his life as well. Plus one, it turns out. Team Liquid go two to one in that fight. That turret's gonna fall. Yeah, since they have Baron, they can keep on going as well. 36 seconds left on Rise and a one second less left on Stunt here. So Team Liquid should be able to finish this one up and grab the inhibitor for their troubles. Really nicely done. That team fight right away off the Baron. They were not cut out by much of anything. And with the inhibitor down, 28 minutes in, they are in an incredible place right now, Team Liquid. Yeah, it has been a scrappy one with some back and forth here. A couple of good counter moves, but in the end, Team Liquid walking it inside the base and bottom inhibitor is very, very big for them. Let's take another look at the engage because this is the mobility we were talking about. Rise gets into the backside, they flank, but then they lose focus here. Pull Belter and Double Lift are defending themselves up on that top side, and they're able to uh, join with the rest of the team here to finish off Fly and the kind of disjointed FlyQuest team. Whereas Wild Turtle did secure the kill onto Ole. But that was the straggler, the one that yeah. was cut off from the rest of the pack, and just the support kill meant they weren't able to hold after that. I respect the attempt to go for the fight by Fly, but the reinforcements were there, and it meant more. The base fell away, and now Flame forced to run, but he's slow by that frozen mallet. Look at him try to run away with those little metal legs. Not going to mean much. Nice snipe comes through for double if he is so alone and jumps away by some time. Meganar comes in, finds the big stun against the wall. They picked up one. They're going to find a second. On to Unstoppable, not for long, while Tony will lose his life as well. Doublelift wins that duel 1v1. A fourth coming through as well. FlyQuest is losing control of their composure. Cut outside their base. Yeah, and that's going to be a teleport down to the bottom side here. It looks like they uh, are going to try and run it in win. very quickly. Let me see those minions. They've got multiple supers. And with the Baron buff, that could be the end of the game if they just push on this wave. 20 seconds of the respawn. This could be the end of Saturday as they push the minions towards the Nexus turrets. Fly alone and rise is not the sickest at wave clear when people are ready to defend him. So here comes turret number one. Plenty of damage coming through. That one going to fall shortly. Chain CC. They'll knock him back as well. The shuffle going to buy him a few more seconds with the Zonias and the arrow. The shield doesn't matter, though, when the first kill comes through. The second turret going to fall. A couple of respawns. Here comes Zonda, but... Is there enough time to stop this team from killing the turret? The Nexus is falling faster and faster. This could be the game for Liquid. They're going to turn back to fight the champions. A few more shots come in. That's the game. Liquid improve. And they will once again tie it third and fourth. Woo. Definitely some weird shenanigans going on early on in the game, especially up on the top side. But once they slowed it down, Team Liquid you know, able to pick off a couple of back-to-back -back fights there and finish it up with the uh, end of day number one here of week five for the victory. Yeah, beautiful stuff right there. Hugs and handshakes and everyone over here. There we go, Impact's like, yay, my friends, let's do this. Sorry, Stunt, don't you as well. Yeah, nice things out of these players. And I thought it was a fun game. You're right, it was kind of hectic and back and forth and there were some missteps, especially some of those early top lane fights, but it did look Pretty fun by the end. I think Liquid had a lot of control there. I really did like Xmithy's early jungling. He got two extra camps away from his opponent, stole two jungle camps in the very first rotation of the jungle, and, and Liquid, for the most part, had a lot of control on this one. Nice attempts by FlyQuest, a couple of good plays by them, but end of the day, Liquid, of course, the better team here. Yeah. Poe Belter on Azir, 5-0-5. He was a menace to deal with in the mid game. Uh, that pick on to Rise, as well as Chaining it into tower destruction just meant that there was so much for Team Liquid to work around. When you, when you yeah. grab an Azir pick uh, and you're able to get early lead like that, yeah, you scale so nicely and it makes it very easy for the team to kind of uh, change the game plan and yep. um, just play right around that. I mean, uh, he did high great. Champion. Highest KDA, most kills, you know, highest everything, most gold, most damage. It's 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 interesting with Poe Belter because he came into the year saying, "I want to prove that I'm the best," right? And it feels like as soon as we said, okay, let's start giving Polter credit, is he really the best? You had Liquid crashing and burning. They had a really bad couple of weeks. And then we're like, all right, let's, you know, yeah, they'll be fine, but they're no longer at the top of the table. He has a game like this again. And he starts, you know, smacking heads and, and doing really well for himself. I mean, 10 out of 11 for KP, certainly solid as well. Uh, and, and I just want to know sort of what level of play we're going to see out of these teams by the end of the split. I think Liquid are getting very close to being a shoe-in for playoffs. I mean, it's only been... It's only going to be a couple of weeks till they're mathematically locked at this point because you've got this sixth, seventh shuffle at like four or five, and they're up to like eight wins at this point now. So pretty soon they're just going to have it for certain. 
And then it's like, okay, how are you going to do in best of fives? How will you do kind of further on? Yeah, super excited for um, the playoffs to start here yeah. because all of the teams right now um, look like they can make a very good case for those playoff spots. Going to be a fun one to watch for us now. For more on that, we'll send it down to Avli and Team Liquid's Poro Rider in the jungle. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Xmithy. Congratulations on that win. Now, last week, you guys did have an 0-2 uh, result. Did that performance affect the team's mentality at all? And how were you able to turn that into a win today? Um, it kind of affected our mentality like in a good way, I guess, because we were trying to find more problems in our play. And this game, um, we still had a lot of like crucial mistakes, but we're still wor we're working towards uh, trying to be more clean, I guess. Have you identified what you would think is the core issue for Team Liquid? Um, I think the main thing, yeah, we do. But there's still a lot of small things that we should work on. Which, like, it can be either macro or even micro. Um, we still have a lot to learn, and our coaching staff is doing really well. And how, along with the coaching staff, what steps are you taking to kind of address those issues? Um, it can be mainly, like, individually. They bring us to, like... Uh, just talk about what plays went wrong and then what plays that we can do as a team better. But I don't know. It just, it just feels, feels really, really weird now because uh, I think we know what our mistakes are, but it's just really hard to change it in the game. Now, at the beginning of the split, the community was really hyping up Team Liquid as like the, the powerhouse of NA. And although the standings no longer really represent it, do you still think that you're one of the strongest teams in the NA LCS? Um, I think we can be... Uh, the best team in uh, NALCS, but right now we still have a lot to learn, and yeah, it shows that we're just still kind of not the best team, I guess. <laughs> well, you're working on it. Congratulations again on your Magic Smithy, and to wrap up the day, let's hear from the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, Avali. Team Liquid moving to 7-4, and four, picking up the first win of the week for themselves, but as we took a look at this game, I do think that this is uh, one of the games today where draft probably determined the least in terms of uh, the, the mm -hmm. final result. Uh, I feel like that's what we've been really harping on a, a major portion of the day. This time around, both comps kind of fell in line with what the teams want to do, and it was more about the execution of the picks within the play. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Team Liquid has a bit of a better scaling comp, and as a result, they have losing side lanes. Rise wants to roam around on the map and try and make some plays happen, and the first big play that he goes for up in the top lane at eight minutes doesn't really work out in their favor. Uh, it's a good look because, uh, you know, Impact's playing it pretty well, but this is all a bait because Rise is on his way up. He's going to alt in, but they don't actually get this kill, and Flame flashes just a little bit too late to get the W extension. So and look how low they get him too. Third, oh. third best top laner Nene was where both of you actually mm -hmm. had him at the top of the day. Impact a little bit farther down the standings, and obviously that is just five seconds of the entirety of the lane phase Tenth. up there. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, right. So boom, <laughs> down to the bottom of the list. Get him down there. But but in actuality, right, this is one of those instances where you look at a player, perhaps the best player on F FlyQuest. Misexecution mm -hmm. and and that kind of be, was the beginnings of the unraveling for FlyQuest in this game. Yeah, that really stops momentum, right? Because they're supposed to have Rise, who's not going to win into Azir. But we were saying before the game, he's probably going to sack a wave, make a roam, and get either the Callista Tom Kench lane ahead or the Camille lane ahead. It's right. more beneficial to get the Camille lane ahead because it's an easier four-one split push win condition. And when you mess that up, it just kind of deflates a right. lot of your strategy. And then what Team Liquid did well after that was because Smithy went up there and he died actually to Flame, kind of scrapping it out really hard, but right. it forced a lot of resources, slowed the tempo down, and then Poe Belter, after getting that stopwatch forced out, was able to keep making plays on the mid lane. He Shreema shuffled him like two or three times in a row, and that's where Team Liquid got control of the game. What do we do about this guy, Jet? Poe Belter. Uh, I mean, so what, uh, come on. We, we've been talking a lot, and Freak mentioned it towards the end of the broadcast. When we say Poe Belter is really good, he proceeds to be bad. <laughs> and when you say he is bad, he proceeds to be good. It's like the Poe Belter paradox is what we have to say. There now. it is. So he did okay. This game. <laughs> I refuse. We're gonna keep. We're just gonna yeah. middle ground him the whole way through the split. I he could have done more. You know, <laughs> he, he might have been the best player, but he could have done more. Cause he, cause he, cause, cause in all seriousness, he actually did perform 
incredibly well in this game. It, maybe. On that Azir. Yeah. Captain. <laughs> <laughs> Stick it to the bit. I like yeah. it. Stick yeah. it to the bit. Uh, but yes, I mean, capitalizing on some of those resources that were, you know, expended in the top lane by FlyQuest mm -hmm. gets him rolling in the mid lane. And then we just saw kind of the map pressure fall on top of FlyQuest in a in that losing matchup that Double of Dinole had, the Ezreal Tom Kench. They end up taking mm -hmm. the first turret. Yeah. They actually end up taking mid turret as well and then going up top. The mid turret was taken rather by the Rift Herald. Then they go mm -hmm. top turret and take it as a two or as a duo. And so where does that even come from? Why are they getting away with stuff like this. I mean, the way I think about it is you have two winning matchups, but you have your best player in Flame against arguably Team Liquid's worst player in Impact. So that's the lane they tried to snowball. Double if versus Wild Turtle is a bit of a mismatch in their bot lane. And so they wanted to attack the strongest and weakest point on the map in the mm. top lane. That didn't work. And then naturally over time, the Ezreal, which is counterpicked by Kalista, slowly starts winning. They did gank it once. They got a double kill down mm -hmm. there. But at that point, it was too little too late as the game had kind of slipped away from the bot lane's control. One more macro clip I want to take a look at comes 30 minutes into the game. This yes. is FlyQuest winning a fight, not forcing the Baron. Team Liquid will in response. Yeah, and FlyQuest was down about 3,000 gold before this fight. Notice how they get a really good flank around the back from the rise as the Camille teleport completes, and they basically delete double it from the fight. And then they kill two more people. So at the end of this, it's just Pobelt and Zir and X Smithy Sijuani, which is threatening, but you're a team with Kalista. And even though Anders Lowe's got smite up, could actually just smite for the heal, and you can go for this bear. You should absolutely be trying to force for this Baron. Zone out maybe with Flame. Stack up the Kalista Spears. They stay out on the map for a long time. Team Liquid literally just revives from their fountain and decides to five-man the Baron and go for a 50-50, which I actually think is a riskier Baron call than FlyQuest had the opportunity to do, and they get it. Yeah, so this was a situation where FlyQuest tried to grab turrets. Instead, it was really hard for them to get the mid lane turret. Fly almost died versus Pobelt. Yeah. There. So they were late resetting, and they couldn't actually contest that. And that's they, where the gold dips. That's, that's the game. Yeah, if, if they went for the jugular off that play, Maybe they throw the game there, but they were losing that game anyways. And as soon as they don't go for that play, Team Liquid is the one who shows that they're aggressive and the game ends minutes later still with that Baron buff on. Those are those make or break calls and it's mm -hmm. hard to, you know, it's hard to say what the communication would have been like in that moment, but ultimately Team Liquid capitalizes mm -hmm. on the fact that FlyQuest stayed out on the map for far too long, pick up that Baron, close out from there. And now I'm looking at a FlyQuest that way at four and six was very yeah. well positioned to make a run at the playoff picture. Right, We were pretty high on them coming out of their preceding weeks and their possibility of picking up games and maybe making a case for that playoff run. What are our thoughts now? I didn't expect them to beat Team Liquid. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, they are 4-7. and seven. They can probably lose three more games, right? You like, said the, the marker was eight games, right? It's the absolute minimum you can get in there. So they can still win four of their next seven and have a chance of getting in there. It's going to be really tough for a lot of these struggling teams to find the wins to get in the playoffs. We're talking about them, Optic, the fact that 100 Thieves picked up a win that today was huge. really hurts FlyQuest because that's a team they're now two games behind. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be really hard. I don't think it's out of the ballpark yet. You know, just looking at yeah. their next lineup, you have... And they play 100 Thieves tomorrow. That's th the game. Yeah, 100 Thieves. TSM uh -huh. hasn't been looking too fantastic. I mean, they did win today, but like we said, that was such a crazy game, it's kind of hard to evaluate. So there are some winnable games, but they do need to clean up their execution a little bit because this was a very even draft situation that they got outplayed. Well, we're talking about it, so let's take a look at what today's games did to the standings. Despite faltering, both Echo Fox and Cloud9 retain first and second place respectively, while Clutch Gaming and Team Liquid hold third at seven and four. Now, just for fun, let's take one more look at the predictions and uh, take a look at how you both fared Such a blast. today. Mm, fun, fun not, day. not the worst in all in all reality. If uh, I just listened to my gut, I could be a tied jet. You could have done it on today if you hadn't flip flopped for the second time to the incorrect mm. prediction. I, don't agree but with that I went with yeah. my gut with COG, and <laughs> that was do, a huge mistake. Agree to argue. So. Yeah. We can uh, we can do that later. Uh, well, we but hey, great. only one game separates you guys now in the mm -hmm. prediction scores. A couple weeks left to go. It should be very interesting moving into week nine. Throughout the split, we've pinpointed the plays that sometimes get overlooked. But for this iteration of I'm Helping, brought to you by State Farm, I'm sure I'd be hard-pressed to find anyone who missed Aframu's godly hooks in his win over Cloud9. Then Scarin back and away, deciding they're going to force the fight a little bit elsewhere. Video's going to be saved for now by Ryu's heroic entrance. Ryu grabbing the kill onto Jensen to start this one off, trying to get himself away. Barely going to be creeping out until they're able to grab the kill. Someday coming in the TP behind enemy lines. Cloud9. Oh, nice one. In the middle of everything. The hook will shut Licorice down as Sneaky. Now going to be double killed. I'm taking my I'm ulting. I'm just ulting. I got a hook on Corky. Corky, Corky, Corky. Debuff, debuff, debuff. 
Keep fighting, keep fighting. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Corky, Corky, Corky. Back up, back up. Kai, 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 Good return to form for Afro. Uh, he's such a big player for that team that when he gets this champion, he's able to just put the game in his own hands, doesn't need to follow up on anyone, just finds the right hooks and they're able to kill everybody. I mean, this guy's identity for so long was playmaking mm -hmm. support. You're looking at things like the Thresh as an example, the Alistar, and even on things like Morgana, flash plays. Mm -hmm. and, and here we're seeing glimpses of that. So it'll be really interesting to see, again, if, he, if this is just enough uh, you know, of a taste of that glory that he needs to kind of compel himself to reach that point once again. Now, we missed it earlier. We wanted to take another look at the end of the bout between Optic Gaming and Golden Guardians. It highlights that while many plays are made with good intentions, they don't always end as planned. Now they're grouped up in the Baron pit. Watch for the shockwaves. And TP used to find themselves the fight, and the Rizal pulls them right back up. And that can mean they can rush towards Baron, but can the team they be zoned out? They can try to push the team away. A nice knockback by Trist means no chance to smite and shockwave secures the kill on Matt as well. What a play out of Optic. I'm gonna run Good left looking. and ulti out if he TPs. Uh, they're TPing, they're TPing, they're TPing. Get up, get up, get up. Come to me, come to me, come to me. Oh, they're TPing out. Oh, just finish, 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 finish. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ult to Scanner. I'm gonna ult to Scanner. I'm gonna ult to Scanner. They can't, they can't run, they can't run. Finish, 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 finish. Finish it. That is one of the more interesting Baron dances that I have seen, Freak. Oh, it was just like you that understood hurts. and you heard the comms what the plan was, but it's you can just kite up, just yeah. kite, kite up and back. You want to get away from the TP, but they just like, they cornered themselves right. afterwards. I love, you and know. Optic's like, <laughs> they just TP'd out. Just take <laughs> yeah, 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 I love how Wait, just take it. Just take the Baron. Okay. Oh, God, that's too funny. My goodness, too funny. Hey, I mean, for for. For all, for like every 99 shot calls that High makes, well, there's got to be one that doesn't, right? Every once in a while, man. In all fairness, yeah. let's take a look at what the game, or what rather, what games we can look forward to tomorrow. Sunday starts with Optic Gaming facing TSM, and then FlyQuest aim to take down 100 Thieves with Cloud9 versus Clutch Gaming closing out the weekend. You already called out, Jet, that FlyQuest 100 Thieves matchup as being a big one tomorrow mm -hmm. in terms of the playoff picture. Are there any other interesting just straight-up matchups, either player-wise or team-wise, that you're really looking forward to? Clutch Gaming versus C9, because if they win that, suddenly they're tied for a playoff bye. Like, we keep talking about C9, how they're clearly the second-best team, and Clutch, like, we keep doubting them. But if they actually go out there and mm -hmm. win tomorrow, we have to legitimately talk about them as the second-best team in North America. Are you prepared to do that? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, they already have the longest winning streak of any team. Is that true? They yeah, do? Five, five, right? Yeah, five. five. Yeah. And if it goes to six, that's going to be a longer streak than anyone else has had this whole split. And, and that beats Echo Fox because they lost today. Yep. Yep. And wow. with TSM on there twice, C9, some pretty respectable teams that they're beating here. I mean, what's going on in the NALCS, guys? Do you feel that's like... One, baby. <laughs> we're, we're getting no closer to a definitive picture, I feel. Yeah. Best of one, 41 roster new moves, new players. Right. Of the 50 starting players, one plus 41 one were two. moved to a new team or new position, new roster, something of the like. Yeah. That's insanity. And every team is changing a lot from week to week. So uh, we're getting a lot more insight as well into kind of how the teams work. We got like five or six teams making documentaries, and we yeah. know how, like, we've seen a few subs from the academy teams. We've seen how some teams have hit rock bottom. That's what happened to 100 Thieves. Right. I mean, you know, they had heart-to-hearts amongst everyone and actually decided on a singular way to play and smash today. So, uh, and that could be fleeting, right? Now that they've solved everything, is it really solved, right? We're going to have a huge patch hit next week as well. Mm -hmm. and, and not that I want to get into this because it's a huge discussion, but in some sense, that's exactly what Spring Split is about, right? Yes. I mean, as we find ourselves in a franchise system with a uh, permanent partnership and more growth-oriented approaches, you're going to start seeing instances where Spring Split can be can be spent with more experimentation and it's less about picking up every single win or grinding it out because you need the victory. And I think a great example of this would probably be Optic, a team that didn't look like they gelled together and have a definitive play style. People had them power ranked mm. pretty low at the start of the season, but you see a legitimate strength in Arrow and Power of Evil's team fighting. Akkadian is like good in the early game to get them through there if they could just shore up a couple of the other positions and that's what they're trying to do with Dokla subbing in. So that's a team that you're looking at like, okay, maybe Spring is a little out of the, you know, ground for them even though they are still trying to fight into the playoffs they could become really good in summer with one or two moves it's crazy it's hectic but i like it that's going to do it for saturday so for myself the casters and the entire live broadcast crew thank you for watching we'll see you tomorrow for more of the NALCS. good night